welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're with Norman Bowman, who's currently signing 42nd Street at the Drury Lane. Thank you for being on the channel and for chatting with us. You're very, very welcome. It's nice to see you. Always. Um, so I've been looking kind of through your theatre credits and it's safe to say you've had a very varied like theatre career. Can you remember getting your first professional job? Uh, you mean the exact moment that I got No, no, just like what it was and like how you felt about oh, yeah. finally getting a professional job out there. Um, I do remember because it was um, a pretty big one to start with. In all honesty, uh -huh. uh, it was Les Miserables. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> and I'd been out of college. I think it was um, yeah, maybe three, four months or something. Mm -hmm. And I'd already had it easy up to that point, to be honest. My agent came uh -huh. out of the showcase, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really having to work that hard. <laughs> yeah, before I knew it, I was in you know one of the most famous musicals mm -hmm. ever. Um, uh, I can't quite remember the phone call. I do remember my flatmates um, all having a little party in my honour. Uh, and yeah, of course it was quite extraordinary. Um, I've always kind of taken things as they come and uh -huh. I don't expect anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, um, it, it's always a, a lovely surprise. So mm -hmm. for it to be Les Mis, which was actually one of the first shows I ever saw. In truth, <laughs> I fell asleep when I watched it. <laughs> Back in the 80s, but it was up in the gods, you know. Yeah, it does make a difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. I saw the lights behind the barricades that was mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, representing a gunfire. Yeah. And I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't buying it. Uh huh. But of course, it's a very different experience when you get when you get the yeah. when you get the job. I suppose it taught you quite a lot as well. First job, and it's like a big West End kind yeah. of show. It's like a massive learning curve for someone that's just come out of huge. college. Yeah. And then you're just in the in the real world and straight in. Yeah, um, I mean it was about a, maybe a 50% cast change so you had this okay. wonderful mix of old and new yeah, yeah. and uh, of course there was lots of us sort of fresh faced straight out of college mm -hmm. meeting these people who had been in the job for a while um, and uh, yeah there was that it was, a, it was a wonderful mix but it was an interesting mix as well uh -huh. you know they, they kind of pretty much said Guys, calm down. <laughs> you're shooting us up here. <laughs> now you're in the door. Yeah. Just take it easy. And um, perhaps we were being overexcited, you know? Um, what would I have been? 20, 26, 27. Uh -huh. um, I remember saying, oh, I could do this for nothing. Yeah. Uh, a line that I'm constantly reminded of by one of my friends who became a friend at uh -huh. that time. Um, it, it, and yeah, I mean, I mean, Les Miserables, I, mean, I was second cover Marius, which was good enough for me, I was Jean yeah, Prouvaire, yeah. so I was on stage, I was <laughs> doing stuff, and the contracts were shorter then, and within six months I got the first cover, and within the next contract I was playing Marius, but I was on a lot in anyway, uh -huh. first cover. You had this guy called Mario Frangoulis playing uh, Marius and he just didn't do weekends. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he just called me on a Friday say, hey, do you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You're like, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he'd be off maybe just having fun or in Greece doing private yeah. concerts and stuff like that. So um, one of the treats was I got on quite a few times with uh, Francis Ruffel. Yeah, nice. Which was wonderful. Um, I, th I can't remember if I ever got on with, um, on stage, mm. got on with her, uh, with, um, uh, Oh, original. No, no, not original. Um, uh, it's going to come to you. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Lea Salonga. Of course, of course. <gasps> I'm getting old. <laughs> um, is there a certain show that you've done that you think is your personal favourite? Or like a role that really like meant something to you? I mean, Le Mays probably because it was the first one always will hold yeah. a special place in your heart. But even now going through everything that you've done, like I know you've done a lot of Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, what kind of... What makes you love Shakespeare? I mean, his work is phenomenal, it but is. you've done a lot of it. So, what makes you like drawn to his to his work, and want, you want to do his pieces a lot, kind of thing? Well, seeing as there's two uh -huh. questions there, um, the first one, I, I, I always feel like um, like I'm ducking out by saying there is no one show that is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I've loved every job I've done, almost without exception. <laughs> um, Having twins, it's like being asked who's my favourite child. Yeah. Every single job has served me really well mm -hmm. in one way or another, be it with the people I've worked with or what I've learned. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and again, you know, for for somebody who only ever did it as an amateur and didn't think would be able to do it as a professional, yeah. I just I, I truly, truly like chuffed and it and surprised mm -hmm. and grateful for every job that's come along. Cool. Some jobs give you different experiences. Yeah, like Greece, you know, playing mm -hmm. Danny in Greece is the most fun you can have uh -huh. on the stage as an actor. But um, uh, to, to to play Sky Masterson and Guys and Dolls uh, uh, alongside Patrick Swayze, yeah. you know, <laughs> a legend. You know, you can't compare those uh -huh. two, and I would never want to. Yeah, They're completely uh, valid um, personal favourites. Um, and every job does that. This is an, another uh -huh. one. This is a new one. You know, uh, it was, this was the first show I ever saw okay. in the West End. That's exciting. It is. I'm not a hoofer. Mm -hmm. You know, I've managed to get away with it by doing cats and, <laughs> and, and the dancing in Greece. But to be part of one of the most legendary mm -hmm. uh, uh, fables of Broadway uh, is just, just the best. It really is. Um, but Shakespeare um, comes a very, very close second to singing for me. Mm -hmm. Once you get into that world, uh -huh. once you understand those words, once you, uh, it's like, um, it's like the Matrix. It's like taking the red pill or mm -hmm. the blue pill. Yeah. And I had an incredible tutor at college who taught me, who opened my eyes mm -hmm. to Shakespeare. Because up until that point, I, I, I understood it ish, but yeah, I didn't it. really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But as an actor, there's no better tools to have than those words, mm -hmm. as Ian Holm calls it, uh, jewels in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Just wonderful. And, and uh, again, no one thing better than uh -huh. the other. And I love my, my career is, is starting to balance itself yeah, yeah. out like that, that I can do something like this time last year was King Lear. And this time I'm doing 40 seconds street. <laughs> Completely different. Brilliant. I couldn't great. have wished for any more diverse. Uh -huh. I really couldn't. No, it's, it's great to have the diversity because, you know, there's now and then people just tend to do the same thing. So you're very lucky to be able to have a whole back catalogue of I so am. many different things from plays to musicals. And, and that's a piece of yeah, advice too. I constantly give to students who are always asking mm -hmm. um, about that particular uh, fine line you got to work hard not to be pigeonholed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just you, though. It's uh -huh. the industry, yeah. you know. Um, and actually, it took a choreographer to kind of set me down that other path of mm -hmm. Shakespeare. Uh, Rob Ashford, who choreographed Guys and Dolls, became a director. Um, his first job was Parade at the Donmar. And through that association, I've ended up doing yeah. most of my Shakespeare. Uh -huh. uh, so that was quite ironic in that respect. Yeah. But it goes to show. For me, the way I say it, you put in the hours, you do your work, do a good job, be a good human being, and I think eventually the, 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 the right work finds you. It yeah, will yeah, come your course. way. Yeah. Um, you mentioned having twins. How easy is it to balance your work and personal life with them? Well, as an actor, full stop, never easy. <laughs> <laughs> never easy. We have the best of both worlds at times, of course, uh -huh. you know, like my kids uh, on the summer holidays, you know, mummy and daddy are around, yeah, yeah. you know, we don't do the nine to five, uh -huh. but um, they're very different worlds, mm -hmm. you know, as well. Uh, I, I don't live with my kids, uh, but I'm very near uh -huh. and as a family we're still really close yeah, yeah. and we've managed to make things work as best as possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, relationships can become a, mm -hmm. a victim of, 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 of this uh, particular crazy world that we live in. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain aspects, of course, I would change, but ultimately, it's just the way it goes, I oh. think. Um, and uh, my kids benefit from it anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, they go and watch their mum do concerts, uh -huh. uh, be it from the front or in the wings yeah, yeah. and the wings for me that's the, the best yeah that's the best view in this show nightly i am in the wings in act two watching and uh i wish i could share that with the world uh -huh. because yes of course what you see is the is is the presentation mode what you see mm -hmm. is everything that we've worked hard at giving to yeah. the audience but when those when those guys are in the wings and they're all prepping and ready and uh -huh. they're standing in their little <laughs> slots and 
uh, ready to go on go stage on. and you watch them and they walk on and then they're hit by the light and it's just incredible. Uh -huh. It is incredible. And I've had those moments... <laughs> Do you want to get that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it mine? It's not yeah. mine. You talk about the wings and you're saying how good it is seeing people from the wings. And I suppose it's nice seeing them like transform from like this warm up kind of stage to when they actually step out and they're like in character mode and they're ready to go. It is. It's like yeah. an amazing transformation. Even though I'm part of it, it's still a fascinating study. Uh -huh. I remember having moments as an amateur being on stage with everybody around me, all looking out to the audience. And there was this. I don't know how to describe it or even how to paint it, but no. you can imagine we're all these kind of figures, these silhouetted figures on stage. Mm -hmm. It's the audience that are lit, yeah. you know, by what's on stage. Mm -hmm. So you have this wonderful kind of reverse yeah. of us watching the audience yeah. watching us. Uh -huh. um, and it's something that never disappears, it never mm -hmm. loses its um, appeal and weirdness. Yeah. Um, and I do have it as a as a professional. Um, I mean, look, you could question how big that uh, line is between amateur and professional. Mm -hmm. Most of us started as amateurs. Yeah, of course. Sometimes the only difference is money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the magic, the the consistency of of the wonder that you get from doing the one mm -hmm. thing you love yeah, I... is just. Undying. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, it's that quote, isn't it? Find something you love, you never work a day in your life. It's true. And that just like always yeah, theatre, it's like. It is very true. Very, very true. Now, to when life. you get into eight shows a week for a year, yes, it becomes a little bit more uh, practical, mm -hmm. and you have to find your way to get through that. But, yeah. Uh, I personally would love to see a return to the shorter contracts. Mm -hmm. I get that it's not always. Uh, practical for the producers, uh -huh. certainly not financially, um, but maybe that's the skill, maybe that's where it lies. And that's part of the other reason for doing uh, the shorter contracts mm -hmm. and, and the Shakespeare, is after doing a year, sometimes two, yeah. of a, a job, you want to get away from that, because uh -huh. it, it just goes against who you are as mm -hmm. an artist, as a creative. Yeah to be repeating the same, same thing. thing all the time. Mm -hmm. No matter how hard you try, you will eventually run out of ideas mm -hmm. and to keep this fresh. Yeah, yeah. Even if the audience is different every night, which obviously is a given, uh -huh. but what you have to do to stand in yeah, the same place, a certain amount of time. face the same person, <laughs> see the same lines, imagine doing that in an office. I know, you can only <laughs> say the same line differently a few times. <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, of course, the other thing is if you try and meddle with it, let's say you're six, seven months down the line, uh -huh. you're just going to screw yourself up. Yeah. And I've <laughs> I've tried almost, I think, almost every show I've ever been in because of that. Uh -huh. I think I need to work on finding a way that's, that, 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 that's a level that's slightly more superficial so uh -huh. I can just do it, be a little bit more automaton, you mm -hmm. know, but it's just not in my blood. <laughs> um, you talk about shorter runs, you just did Murder Ballad before this and that was a limited run. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like working with like Kerry, Ramin and Victoria? I mean they're powerhouse both of Did are. you ask them what it was like working with me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will. No, no I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was what I hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said already, every job teaches me something. And to work with those three, that triumvirate especially, um, mm. was pretty damn special. Yeah. It really was. I mean, I often refer to myself as the the, the ginger one from <laughs> Girls Aloud, um, <laughs> but it, it's not it's not altogether untrue. You know, these guys, they, they have a fearlessness. They have a. Uh, 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 an energy they have, a level that they all operate at, that mm -hmm. I envy. Yeah. It's not really <laughs> how I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. I still at times feel like that amateur dramatic guy yeah. who's just doing it for fun. Um, but to watch those um, pros, those ones who really kind of, they've filled their, 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 their they've made their mark, mm -hmm. you know? They fill the space that they're in, in very different ways, mm -hmm. was great, was just, you know, an, un, an unending pleasure. Mm -hmm. 
and very different, like I said, very different from each other. Uh -huh. So to be part of that four yeah. on those posters was a, a privilege, it really was. Very different again, f cast of four, now it's cast of 54. Yeah. One hour and 20 minutes straight through, this is two hours and what, maybe 30. When you're uh, the interval. Yeah, very different subject matter, mm -hmm. styles of songs. I mean, it was, it's a bit like spinning a wheel, really. It's mm -hmm. like, what do you want to do next? Thanks. Okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> tapping! 40 seconds free. Okay, I'm not tapping, but I'm in amongst it. Yeah. I'm rolling it from the from the wings. Yeah, you're doing it from the side. I am. I am. I want to learn. I want to I be that. Yeah, I want it. Tapping is exciting. It's fantastic. Very much so. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. one of the, I think one of the, the best forms of dance. It just gives you so much like... Pleasure, it makes you smile. Yeah, you've got to be creatively dead inside if it doesn't make you feel mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Especially on mass, the way we uh -huh. have it. Yeah, mass. when there's a lot of people tapping. But when on. you get the real skilled ones, like there's Graham Henderson who plays uh, Andy in this show, mm -hmm. who's in the original cast. And of course, he's a grown man yeah, yeah. tap dancing. <laughs> And the muscularity of, of his footwork mm -hmm. is it's just... It's a fine skill. Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It is. I, mean, is it a lot e I assume it's a lot easier to learn things like Mert Ballet because it was all sung through. I'm assuming yeah. it's easier just to learn songs when, yeah. as opposed to learning like a lot of lines. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, of course, to a certain extent with music, you are a little limited mm -hmm. in terms of interpretation. Yeah, yeah. you still got to sing the same words in, in those particular notes. Uh -huh. But it's you that brings something different, you know, yeah. your voice, uh, mm -hmm. your physicality, um, your perspective. Yeah. Uh, but there's no denying, take away the music and you just got lines. Uh -huh. Yes, of course, there's far more room for interpretation. But this piece is very stylistic. Mm -hmm. It's very specific. Oh, yeah. um, so how much creative freedom do you have in this? Uh, you know, one would argue probably just as much as you would in a song through mm -hmm. musical. Uh, this is a well-oiled machine and that's what people love about yeah. it. You know, it gets on with things. Uh -huh. You know, the, the pace of the, the, the speech is is brisk. It's mm -hmm. like get through it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Don't leave the audience uh, don't let the audience get too far ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Try not to leave them behind either. <laughs> it's up to them to keep up. Uh -huh. Now for people that don't know what 42nd Street is, can you just briefly talk about the storyline of the show? Well, they must have been born yesterday. <laughs> I mean, the story despite line, the point is about yeah. 42nd Street New York. <laughs> well, I mean, in a nutshell, it's about putting on a show in the era of the Great Depression in mm -hmm. New York in the 1930s. At a time where people had so very, very little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, actually, as part of our homework, we were all... Um, asked to bring in stories or information mm -hmm. that we could glean about the uh -huh. 1930s, either from our grandparents or from the internet, just to get a sense because we are so far removed from that. Yeah, yeah, we are. We have never had it so good. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, uh, to go back to an era where you did have very little, it was extraordinary, mm -hmm. the common theme of community spirit and what people did for each other and how much they appreciated, even though they had so much less. Uh -huh. um, and this is what the show is about. The, the show is about, okay, it's about ostentatiousness, it's about putting on a big happy musical but the idea being that it was to lift people out of the doldrums, oh, mm -hmm. to give them a, um, a form of escape. Rather like the effect it feels like it's having now. Mm -hmm. You know, people keep saying this is the right time to have this uh -huh. kind of a show. Yeah. You know, yeah. we are bombarded with bad news and, and, and with doom and gloom and, and we're looking for escapism. Yeah. We're looking for something to make us feel happy and, and restore our faith in the mm -hmm. human spirit. And 42nd Street doesn't set out to do anything other than entertain. Uh -huh. You know, it's not Shakespeare. It's not going to change your way of thinking, but it's mm -hmm. going to gladden your heart. Yeah. It's going to make your soul smile. <laughs> Um, and it's about the um, <coughs> excuse me. It's about the the trials of trying to put on this particular show. Mm -hmm. I won't give too much of the plot because obviously you know uh, that would spoil the fun. But there's an incident that occurs, and somebody has to come in <laughs> and take over at the eleventh uh, hour. And um, it is very much about making people happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need. Like you say, in is. times like this, they it need. Is. To 
coming from there maybe a bad day and leave feeling kind of more positive about yeah. everything the very day of the Westminster attack mm -hmm. um, our, our wonderful leading man Tom Lister put a little message that we have between the company mm -hmm. just saying let's let's allow them to forget about yeah, yeah. those things for a little while just for a couple of hours or to at least believe that the world isn't yeah. you know in complete and utter despair it's savable you know we have art we have creativity we should mm -hmm. celebrate that you yeah, were doing this for a while but after this is there any ambitions that you still have that you really want to achieve? <coughs> Yeah. Any specific roles that you may want to do? Specific roles, my god. Um, I mean, most of them I've had to say goodbye to now because of age. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, I would, I mean, I love film mm -hmm. and I love TV dramas. Yeah. I would love to have a part in that yeah. somewhere, somewhere down the line. But I've made a lot of peace with, with, um, with um, ambition. Uh -huh. And you get to a certain point in your life where you kind of go, I'm not going to allow myself or my happiness mm -hmm. or my state of mind to be dictated yeah. by whether I'm working or not or what jobs I'm doing or mm -hmm. not. So I have a full appreciation for every job that comes along. Yeah. It's nice to know that after a certain while, um, you kind of know something will come along. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps it's a laziness, but I think it's also like the more you kind of try and steer yourself down a certain route, I think the more frustrated you're going to yeah, get. Yeah. Maybe be just uh, like I'm doing is accept the, the opportunities that come along if mm -hmm. I want to do them. I'm not saying I take anything yeah, that yeah. comes along, but if it excites me, if it's, if it's different, if mm -hmm. it's um, in this case, you know, it's something at the Drury Lane, which I've never done in a big, huge... A foot tapping musical that I haven't done in about five six years, then, yeah, yeah, yeah why would I say no? Mm -hmm. I mean, other parts still to be wished for, I guess. Of course, you know, there's, there's very few male actors who wouldn't want to be Valjean mm -hmm. know, to have a a, yeah, a, yeah. a, a go a, a part like that, a stamina piece mm -hmm. like that, um, but. You know, like I said, who knows what comes around the corner? Mm -hmm. and, and you could be sitting there for two months with nothing, and then all yeah. of a sudden... and something just comes yeah. along. I think having kids takes that pressure off as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it adds some, of course. I've got to earn money. I've got to, yeah, yeah. I've got to make sure that they're, that they're, they're well cared for. But, uh -huh. you know, if you have that fulfillment in your life, it can kind of take the yeah, pressure yeah. off. So right now, I've got... I've got it all. I've mm -hmm. got as good as it gets in a cracking West End show yeah. in Drury Lane, two beautiful kids and the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you never know what's, what will come over from Broadway as well. There's so many exactly. amazing shows there at the moment that are hoping, hoping to transfer here. So yeah. Yeah. maybe something that you never knew about might come over. And maybe. Murder Ballad was one of those. I never uh -huh. knew about it until it presented itself. Yeah. Um, that's what's exciting about theatre, the it two is. differences between Broadway and West End, like not knowing stuff yeah. and then being a part of it when it comes here and opening a role that people probably never had heard of before. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I think Broadway and West End bring very, very different things to the table, mm -hmm. you know. There's no denying they do certain styles much with more a land than we uh -huh. do and vice versa. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's a very healthy exchange to have their shows coming over and yeah. ours going over there. Yeah, yeah. Never used to be like that. It used to be very much one-way traffic um, mm -hmm. with a, a lot of transfers from Broadway, but I think it's very evenly balanced now. So, yeah, and that makes for exciting opportunities for everybody, you know. May everybody who's right for the part find it. Find you it. Know? And yeah. hopefully some new stuff will come to you. Yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> um, Finally, I wanted to ask you, is there any advice that you would give your younger self? I usually finish with this because I feel like it's such a reflective question to end them because people, a lot of people say that they you know, they would tell their younger self to have more confidence in themselves and, and whatnot. Yeah, obviously that's a popular <laughs> one. It's an odd one. It's, it's, it's the sense that you feel that in some respects, when you look back mm -hmm. over where you've been, what you've done, who you've met, it's always been a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps you'd learn it no matter the circumstances, because everybody has varying degrees of confidence yeah. and, and abilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you're where you are because of what you've done mm -hmm. and who you've seen. And, and um, it, it, 
with maybe a few exceptions. Uh, there's not much I would ultimately change. I still wish I was a bit more fearless. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I talk about those other three in Murder Ballad, you know, they have a fearlessness. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, whether that's true, you know, most of us have a front, most of us have a, a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still wish I had a little bit more fearlessness. Yeah. I, I would have wished I've had a little bit more confidence and drive back then. But, you know, if I look at my CV, I can't wish for much difference, yeah, yeah, yeah. in all honesty. Mm -hmm. I sometimes envy being maybe like a Ramin Karamlu who's like right at the top. But that's an exhausting place to yeah, be too. Yeah. And I think it requires a certain stamina, a certain personality, yeah. and I don't know if I'm cut out for that. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately it's just about doing the work as it comes, as mm -hmm. best as you can, and having fun, of course. Um, yeah. So I've said, funny enough, recently somebody put this f uh, photograph on Facebook. Uh, it's a page called Red Lichties Worldwide, and it's for all people from our both, and it's mm -hmm. old photographs. Yeah. And it was this black and white thing, and it was a road being done up in one of the streets in our growth. And one of my friends zoomed in on this photo uh -huh. and saw this man with two kids. Uh -huh. And it turned out to be my dad. Oh, wow. And me and my brother. <laughs> uh -huh. I was three and my brother was two. I mean, aside from the shock, uh, the shock of being in a photograph that looks so old. <laughs> it's like 1972, but it's black and white. The cars yeah. are like <laughs> from a bygone era. I did look at that picture and, and, and have that very thought mm -hmm. about, my God, if you knew what was to come, yeah, yeah. all the things you were going to go through, mm -hmm. would you, if you had a chance, warn them off? Uh -huh. Would you give them advice? What would you do? And like I said, four-fifths, I'd say, of what I've mm -hmm. done in my life, I would not change yeah. at all, at all. There is one fifth that I would, and, and that's more on a personal level, uh, mm -hmm. and that's more about, um, that's more about, uh, do you know what, getting to grips with who you are as a human being as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. and finding your happiness, yeah, yeah. finding what it is that makes you tick, mm -hmm. and not striving to be anybody else, because yeah, you, you can't be anybody mm -hmm. else, it's only you, yeah. and, and nobody else will do you any mm -hmm. better than, than, than yourself. Um, be respectful to others, um, be a decent human being and take yeah. that into any field, into your work, into your social life, yeah, yeah. in any aspect. And then nobody can really ever judge you, nobody uh -huh. can ever look down That's upon right. you, you know, mm -hmm. you, can, you just meet each other eye to eye mm -hmm. and say, nice work, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's very, very good advice, and it, it's true because there's only one you. And that's it. That is. You know what I mean? Everybody else is taken. Taken, yeah. That's the quote. <laughs> yeah, we love those. <laughs> Always ones. need a motivational quote in there. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being on our channel. Okay. Um, make sure that you follow him on Twitter. I'll leave everything in the description box below. And subscribe. Dom, you and have a package at stage door. Dom, you have a there you go. stage door. Dom has a package at the stage <laughs> door. Stage door. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.